Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 7, Potential Energy and Energy Conservation Video 2. Today's topic is work and energy in the motion of a mass on a spray. The objectives are know the definition of elastic potential energy, understand the relationship between work done by the spring and elastic potential energy of the spring, understand the relationship between work done on an object by other forces and objects changing in total mechanical energy. Be able to apply work energy relationship to solve problems. Let's take a look work done on a spring. The work done on a, when you do work on a spring, the work done equals to the force you applied on the spring times the distance. And that is kx times dx. For this case, because kx and dx are in the same direction, so they are the sign is positive. When you integrate this, you'll have one half kx two squared minus one half kx one squared. So work, that's work done on a spring. What is the work done by the spring? Work done by the spring should be the opposite. Let's take a look. Uh, as the spring is uh, moving to the right, there is the work, uh, I mean, the force exerted on the box by the spring is to the left as the block is going to the right. So the the Work is negative kx times dx. That's because the work and displacement are in 180 degrees relative to each other. So therefore, the work done by the spring on the block equals 1 half kx 1 squared minus 1 half kx 2 squared. That kind of makes sense. These two should be opposite of each other. So EL stands for elastic. Let's take a look. Work done by spring and elastic potential energy. So work done by the spring on the block equals 1 half kx 1 squared minus 1 half kx 2 squared. So let's define the potential energy on the spring as UEL elastic potential energy equals 1 half kx squared. In this case, k is the spring constant, x is the extension or compression, the difference between the position and the initial final position, the initial position. So as you can see, UL equals to 1 half kx squared. This UL is always positive, kind of like kinetic energy. Here is a graph of UEL versus x. You can be positive, x can be negative. In both cases, UEL is positive. It's a parabola. So UEL equals to, I mean, work done by the elastic equals UEL at 1 minus UEL at 2. So that equals a negative change in elastic potential energy. Kind of similar to gravitational potential energy and the, the relationship, the gravitational potential energy and work done by gravity. So while a spring is being stretched or compressed, WEL is negative and UEL increases. So when the spring does negative work, the, its energy increase. So the greater amount of elastic potential energy is stored in the spring. While stretched or compressed, the spring relaxes, trying to go back to its natural position. That's when the spring is doing positive work. As a result, the energy in the spring decreases. This is very much like uh, gravity. When gravity does positive work, the object's um, gravitational potential energy decrease. When gravity does negative work, the object's gravitational potential energy increase. Let's compare gravitational versus elastic potential energy. For gravitational potential energy, here is the equation mgy. Work done by gravity, here is the similarities. Work done by gravity equals negative change in gravitational potential energy. And the zero energy point can be arbitrary. However, for elastic potential energy, the equation is different and UEL is always positive. This is a similarity work done by elastic potential energy equals a negative change of the potential energy in elastic. The difference is the zero energy point is defined as when the spring is neither stretched or compressed. The zero energy is not arbitrary. Let's take a look at work done by a spring on a block. So when the spring stretches, the spring does negative work on the block. As, as a result, the block's energy decreases, becomes to a stop. So similarly, as the spring compresses, again, 
the work done by the spring is negative because force and displacement on the spring is opposite. So as a result, the block slows down, the block's energy decreases. As the spring trying to go back to its natural position, that means when spring does positive work, in both cases, the block's energy increase. Let's take a look at work energy theorem. The work energy theorem says the work total, that means the net work done because of changing kinetic energy, no matter what kind of force are acting on the body. So we already talked about work other and work gravity. Now that's including the work done by elastic uh, force. So all the work done together equals changing kinetic energy. Let's substitute work done by gravity is a negative change of uh, gravitational potential energy and work done by elastic is negative change in elastic potential energy plus work other equals to K2 minus K1. If we rearrange this equation, we get this part, all the U's plus K at a point 0.2 minus all the U's plus K at a point 0.1 equals to the work done by the other forces. All the U's and the K's together, potential and the kinetic, is called mechanical energy, E. So work done by the other is just mechanical energy after minus mechanical energy before. Still work done. By the other force equals the change in total mechanical energy. So energy is conserved in a boundary jump. As a person boundary jumping, the only force uh, doing the work on the person is the elastic on the boundary cord and the gravity from the earth. So the boundary jumping is an example of transformation among kinetic, elastic potential, and the gravitational potential energy. In the beginning, the person has gravitational potential energy. As the person falls, that potential changes into kinetic. Eventually, when the boundary cord all stretch out, that energy changes into elastic potential energy. So the whole process is energy transformation. Let's take a look at this example. A glider with mass m equals 0.2 kilograms sits on a frictionless horizontal air track. Connect to a spring with a force constant k equals 5 newton per meter. You pull on a glider, stretching the spring 0.1 meter, and then release it with no initial velocity. The glider begins to move back toward its equilibrium position. What is x velocity when x equals 0.8 meters? Sketch a diagram of the situation. So you have two points. This is 0.1, this is 0.2. The only force doing work is elastic, uh, elastic force. Therefore, mechanical energy is conserved. In this case, we can ignore the uh, pot gravitational potential because gravity does not do work. That's perpendicular to displacement. So let's take a look. Here is position one, here is position two. We simply just substitute the given values for one and two and solve for V2. So you can solve for V2 equals a positive or negative point of three. Positive means going to the right, and negative means going to the left. So at this point, you can move either way. Another example, work done by other force on the spring in motion. So for the previous example, suppose the glider is initially at rest at x equals to zero with the spring unstretched. You then apply a constant force in the positive x direction with magnitude 0 0.610 newtons to the glider. What is glider's velocity when it has moved x equals to 0.1 meter? So this is the case, is work done by the other equals to change in mechanical energy. So mechanical energy again equals to U2, EL2 plus K2 minus UEL1 plus K1. The reason for that is because gravitational potential energy doesn't change. The uh, surface is horizontal. So we change this, work done by the other equals to force times Displacement, that equals to 1 half kx2 squared plus 1 half mv2 squared minus the original uh, potential and the kinetic. So write down what do you know, mkx1. This is the first position at 0 at rest. The next position at point 1, we're trying to find what v2 is. Substitute all the values in, you'll have v2 equals to 0.6 meters per second. Okay, here is another example, motion with gravitational, elastic, and frictional force. 
So the worst case scenario, a 2000 kilogram elevator with broken cable is falling at four meters per second when it first contact a cushioning spring at the bottom of the shaft. The spring is supposed to stop the elevator, compressing two meters as it does so. During the motion, a safety clamp applies a constant 17,000 Newton frictional force to the elevator. As a design consultant, you are asked to determine what the force constant of the spring should be. So kind of sketch a scenario. So here is the elevator at this point, point one, your V equals to zero, your Y equals to zero. You can set Y equals to zero at this point because that's where it's supposed to stop. And uh, this is point two. At point two, V equals to zero, it did stop. And Y equals to negative two. So this is work done by the other that equals to the total mechanical energy at point two minus total mechanical energy at point one. So we substitute work done by friction is negative because the force and displacement are always opposite. That gravity at point two is mgy2 plus uh, elastic potential energy at two is one half ky2 plus one half mv squared minus mgy1 plus this is the um, total mechanical energy at point one. So again, write down what is given, you know mass, you know g, you don't know what k, you have to find what k equals to. Initially, I said at this point, y1 equals to zero, v1 equals to four, y2 is negative two, and v2 equals to zero. F equals 17,000, D equals to two meters. So you have to find K. Substitute everything in, K equals 1.06 times 10 to the four Newtons per meter. So that's a pretty big K. Okay, now consider the situation in the last example. Uh, at the instant when the elevator is still moving downward and the spring compresses by one meter, which of the energy bar graph in the figure most accurately shows kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and elastic potential energy at that instant? So let's think about it. We know K cannot be negative because it's one half mv squared, so its UEL can never be negative. So two and four are out. So we are left with one and three. The only difference is gravitational potential energy. Remember, gravitational potential energy is relative. So according to what we did in the example 7.9, we said uh, gravitational potential energy equals to zero when it just touched the spring. Now, since the spring has compressed by one meter, so it is below that point. Therefore, gravitational potential energy is negative. So according to what we did, we have this as number three as a result is the answer. So we know K and U, EL are always positive. That leaves us with possible answers one and three. Since we said gravi uh, gravitational potential energy equals zero at point one, that's one. It just touched the spring. The elevator is below point one, so your gravity has to be negative. Answer is three. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.